Hi friends, I'm back. This is our sixth episode of the one and only Ivan. Uh, in the last section, we got to know a new character. A new character joined the animals at the, um, the roadside zoo. And that new character's name is Ruby. And Ruby is a baby elephant that was sold um, and bought by Mac, who runs the zoo. Um, and Ivan thought, well, Stella is going to be happy to have another elephant here at the zoo, at the roadside mall. It's not really a zoo when you think about what a zoo is. This is more of a very, very small, small zoo. Um, and Ivan thought that Stella would be happy with the new addition of the tiny elephant, the baby elephant Ruby, but she was angry. Um, and last time I asked you to think about why would she be angry? So if you think to respond about that in your response journals, um, please do. Today we're gonna find out a little bit more about Ruby. This chapter is called Introductions. When I was awake the next morning, I see a little trunk poking out between the bars of Stella's domain. Hello, says a small clear voice. I'm Ruby, she waves her trunk. Hello, I say, I'm Ivan. Are you a monkey? Ruby asked. Certainly not. Bob's ears perk up, although his eyes stay closed. He's a gorilla, he says, and I'm a dog of uncertain heritage. I think that means he's a mutt or he doesn't know his family. Why did the, why did the dog climb on your tummy? Ruby asks. Because it's there, Bob murmurs. Is Stella awake, I ask? Aunt Stella's asleep, Ruby says. Her foot is hurting, I think. Ruby turns her head. Her eyes are like Stella's black and long-lashed, bottomless lakes fringed by tall grass. Oh, listen to that description of an elephant's eye. Listen to this. Ruby turns her head. Her eyes are like Stella's, black and long-lashed, bottomless lakes fringed by tall grass. Isn't that a beautiful description? When is breakfast, she asks. Soon, I say. When the mall opens, the workers come. Where, Ruby twists her head in the other direction, where are the other elephants? Oh, it's just you and Stella, I say for some reason. I feel we have let her down. Are there more of you? No, I say, not at the moment. Ruby picks up a piece of hay and considers it. Do you have a mom and dad? Well, I used to. Everyone has parents, Bob explains. It's unavoidable. Before the circus, I used to live with my mom and my aunts and my sisters and my cousins, Ruby says. She drops the hay, picks it up, twirls it. They're dead. I don't know what to say. I'm. I'm not really enjoying this conversation, but I can see that Ruby isn't done talking. And so to be polite, I say, I'm sorry to hear that, Ruby. Humans killed them, she says. Who else? Bob asks, and we all fall silent. This chapter is called Stella and Ruby. All morning, Stella strokes Ruby, pats her, smells her, they flap their ears, they rumble and roar, they sway as if they're dancing. Ruby clings to Stella's tail. She slips under Stella's belly. Sometimes they just lean into each other, their trunks twirl together like jungle vines. Stella looks so happy. It's more fun to watch TV than any nature show I've ever seen on. It's more fun to watch TV than any nature show I've ever seen on TV. That didn't make sense to me. I'm gonna go back and read that again. Stella looks so happy. It's more fun to watch than any nature show I've seen on TV. Oh, it's more fun to watch Stella being happy than any nature show that he would normally watch on TV. This chapter is called Home of the One and Only Ivan. George and Mac are out by the highway. I can see them through my windows. They're next to one another on tall wooden ladders leaning against the billboard that tells cars to stop and visit the one and only Ivan, mighty Silverback. George has a bucket and a long-handled broom. 
Mac has pieces of paper. He slaps one against the billboard. George dips the broom in the bucket. He wets the paper with a liquid from the bucket and somehow the paper stays in place. They put up many pieces before they're done. When they climb down from their ladders, I see that they've added a picture of a little elephant to the billboard. The elephant has a lopsided smile. She's wearing a red hat and her tail curls like a pig's. She doesn't look like Ruby. She doesn't even look like an elephant. I've only known Ruby one day and I could have drawn her better. This chapter is called Art Lesson. Ruby asks a lot of questions. She says, Ivan, why is your tummy so big? And have you ever seen a green giraffe? And can you get me one of those pink clouds that the humans are eating? What does she want? A pink cloud that the humans are eating. I can almost hear you all saying cotton candy. Does that sound like any small child that you know that asks a lot of questions? When Ruby asks, what is that on your wall? I explain that it's a jungle. She says the flowers have no scent and the waterfall has no water and the trees have no roots. I'm aware of that, I say. It's art, a picture made with paint. Do you know how to make paint? Or sorry, do you know how to make art? Ruby asks. Yes, I do, I say, and I puff up my chest just a little. I've always been an artist. I love drawing. Why do you love it? Ruby asks. I pause. I've never talked to anyone about this before. Uh, when I'm drawing a picture, I feel quiet inside. Ruby frowns. Quiet is boring. Not always. Do you think quiet is boring? Ruby scratches the back of her neck with her trunk. What do you draw anyway? Bananas, mostly. Things in my domain. My drawings sell at the gift store for $25 a piece with a frame. What's a frame? Ruby asks. What's a dollar? What's a gift store? I close my eyes. I'm a little sleepy, Ruby. Have you ever driven a truck? Ruby asks. I don't answer. Ivan, Ruby asks. Can Bob fly? A memory flashes past, surprising me. I think of my father snoring peacefully in the sun while I try every trick I know to wake him. Perhaps, I realize, he wasn't such a sound sleeper after all. What do you think that means? This chapter is called Treat. How's that foot, old girl? George asks Stella. Stella pokes her trunk between the bars. She inspects George's right shirt pocket for a treat that he brings her without, every night without fail. George doesn't always bring me treats. Stella's his favorite, but I don't mind. She's my favorite too. Stella sees that George's pocket is empty. She gives George a frustrated nudge with her trunk and Julia giggles. Stella moves to George's left pocket and discovers a carrot. Nimbly, she removes it. Nimbly means that she did it with, um, she was effective at doing it and she did it with care and she did it easily. She, her, her, her trunk is extremely flexible. Mac walks past. Toilets plugged in the men's bathroom, he says. Big mess. I'll take care of it. George sighs. Mac turns to leave. Um, before you go, Mac, George says, you might wanna take a look at Stella's foot. I think it's infected again. Darn thing never does heal up right. Mac rubs his eyes. I'll keep an eye on it. Money's tight though. Can't be calling the vet every time. She sneezes. Does it sound like Mac has enough money to pay for the veterinarian to come take care of Stella's foot? Doesn't sound like it to me. George strokes Stella's trunk. She inspects his pocket one more time, just in case. Sorry, girl, George says as he watches Mac walk away. This chapter is called Elephant Jokes. 
I blink. I'm sorry, let me start again. Ivan, Bob, I blink. The dawn sky is a smudge of gray flecked with pink like picture drawn with two crayons. I can just make out Ruby in the shadows waving hello with her trunk. Sorry, I was just helping my dog. Um, are you awake? Ruby asks. We are now, says Bob. Aunt Stella's still asleep and we don't want to wake her because she said her foot was hurting really bad. But I'm really, really bored. Bob opens one eye. You know what I do when I'm bored? What? Ruby asks eagerly. Bob closes his eye. I sleep. It's a little early, Ruby, I say. I'm used to getting up early. Ruby wraps her trunk around one of the bars on her door. At my old circus, we would al we always got up when it was still dark and we had breakfast and we walked in a circle and then they chained up my feet and that really hurt. Ruby falls silent. Instantly, Bob is snoring. Ivan, Ruby asks, do you know any jokes? I especially like jokes about elephants. Um. Well, let me see. I heard Mac tell one once. I yawn. Um, uh, how can you tell that an elephant has been in the refrigerator? How? By the footprints in the butter. Ruby doesn't react. I sit up on my elbows trying not to disturb Bob. Get it? What's a refrigerator? Asked Ruby. It's a human thing, a cold box with a door. They put food inside. They put food in, in the door or food in the box? And is it a big box, Ruby asks, or a little box? I can see this is going to take a while. So I sit up all the way. Bob slides off, grumbling. I reach for my pencil, the one I snapped in half with my teeth. Here, I say, I'll draw a picture for you of one of them. In the dim light, it takes me a minute to find a piece of paper that Julia gave me. The page is a little damp and it has a smear of something orange on it. I think it's from a tangerine. I try my best to make a refrigerator. The broken pencil isn't cooperating, but I do what I can. By the time I'm done, the first streaks of morning sun have appeared in flashy cartoon colors. I hold up my picture for Ruby to see. She studies it intently, her head turned so that, so that one black eye is trained on my drawing. Wow, you made that? Is that the thing you were telling me about before? Art? Sure is, I can draw all kinds of things. I'm especially good at fruit. Could you draw a banana right now? Ruby asks. Absolutely. I turn the paper over and sketch. Wow, Ruby says again in an odd voice when I hold up the page. Looks good enough to eat. She makes a happy lilting sound, an elephant laugh. It's like the song of a bird I recall from long ago, a tiny yellow bird with a voice like dancing water. There's another simile. Strange, I had forgotten about that bird, how she'd wake me every morning at dawn when I was still curled safely in my mother's nest. It's a good feeling making Ruby laugh, so I draw another picture and another along the edges of the paper, an orange, a candy bar, a carrot. What are you two up to? Stella asks, moaning as if she tries, to, moaning as she tries to move her sore foot. How are you this morning? I ask. Just feeling my age, Stella says. I'm fine. Ivan is making me pictures, Ruby says, and he told me a joke. I really like Ivan, Aunt Stella. Stella winks at me. Me too, she says. Ivan, Want to hear my favorite joke? Ruby asks. I heard it from Maggie. She's one of the giraffes in my old circus. Sure, I say. It goes like this. Ruby clears her throat. What do elephants have that nothing else has? Trunks, I think. But I don't answer because I don't want to ruin Ruby's fun. I don't know, Ruby, I replied. What do elephants have that nothing else has? Baby elephants, Ruby says. Good one, Ruby, I say, watching Stella stroke Ruby's back with her trunk. Good one, Stella says softly. I'm gonna stop there for today. 
some of you asked in your journals if uh, if Ivan was ever going to be able to go back to the wild again. So I thought I would just toss that little prediction or that question out to you. What do you think is going to happen next? What are you predicting um, as we near about the middle of our book? I want to show you one picture. This is a picture of Ivan showing drawings to little Ruby. All right, friends, don't forget to pop into your response journals. We'll see you next time.